Today on our 2007 Keystone Passport, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Solera 14-foot sand fade replacement awning fabric, part number LCV0003343375. So here's what our awning fabric looks like once we have it fully installed. Now this is going to be great to replace any old, cracked, or worn awning fabrics that may be on your camper right now. Because ours right here at first glance doesn't look that bad, but up towards the seam you can see that it's starting to crack and a few spots in the cracks it's actually going all the way through to where it's actually a hole. This awning fabric is going to be great for us when we go camping with our camper we want to be outside but it may be a little bit too sunny or if it's raining the awning fabric is going to protect us from the heat and the sun as well as from any kind of rain. The material itself is going to be anti-scuff, so we're not going to leave any scratches or anything on it. It's also going to be resistant to mildew, and it's going to be cold crack resistant up to negative 25 degrees, so we know it's going to handle all the seasons. Our awning fabric is going to be compatible with either flat or pitched awnings like we have here. Our awning fabric is going to fit Solara, A&E, and Carefree of Colorado awnings. I do want to mention though that our awning fabric is only going to come with the fabric. It doesn't come with any mounting hardware, the roller, the awning arms, or anything else. And when we're done using our awning, it's going to roll back up just like our factory one. Now that we've gone over some of the features and benefits of our awning fabric, let's show you how we get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to need to remove our awning arms as well as the roller. I'm going to come to the top of the camper here and I'm going to need to remove these bolts that are attaching the arm to the camper. Now I do want to mention that once we remove these bolts the awning is not going to fall off. The awning is still attached to the top of the RV and the arms are still attached as well. Now each application is going to be a little bit different but in ours we have two 3 8 head bolts. I'm using a 3 8 socket to remove them. Now with these two removed, we'll go to the other side and remove the other two as well. Now we're going to need to remove the screw that's holding the awning to the top of our camper. Or we're going to have one screw at the end of the track on each side. And we'll go to remove the other one as well. Now with an extra set of hands, since our awning is loose, we're going to lift up slightly and start sliding the whole awning out of the track. And now we can set it aside and we can start working on our spring tube. All right, we're going to need to come to the side that does not have the lever for the extend and retract, or the back side of our awning. Now there's going to be a small hole right about where the pole goes through the roller tube. And I'm going to take a small pick, and I'm actually going to insert it into that hole, which is going to lock the spring tension on this side. And if we move to the front side of our awning, we're going to need to remove this bolt so that we can remove the arm right here from the roller itself. Now everybody's hardware is going to be a little bit different, but I'm using a 716 socket and wrench. Now we're going to take that bracket that just came off, we're going to line it back up, and I'm going to be replacing the bolt temporarily going through my roller bar and this metal bracket here. Now we don't need to crank this down, we're just going to leave this hand tight just so that that bolt and nut is secure. We should have this metal bracket back on our roller. And as you can see here, I have a piece of wood holding up my roller far enough off the ground. Now we're gonna take a pair of vice grips and I'm gonna grab onto that bracket that we just bolted back to our roller. You just wanna make sure you have a firm grip on there because we are gonna be releasing the tension off of the roller. So now that we have that firm grip, I'm going to rotate it slightly forward to allow me to turn my selector lever back to the retract position. And roughly my pliers are straight up and down. Now this is going to come into effect because we need to count how many times that we rotate it back so when we put our new fabric on, we can get the right amount of tension. You just want to go slow and be careful. and go until it unrolls all the way. And with the tension taken off, we can go and remove our pliers, and we're gonna get ready to remove the end cap. Now, we're gonna need to mark 
the lever, the position for the retract and extend lever, the, in the same location, so I'm gonna take a marker and I'm gonna draw a straight line going straight across the cap and onto my roller tube. That way, once we get going and we need to remove all this, I can put it back in the same position. Now the caps on the end here are gonna to have to come off. So we're gonna to need to drill through the rivets that are holding our end cap on. Now yours may look a little different. You may have screws or bolts holding it in. And in that case, you'll just need to remove those. But I'm gonna take about a quarter inch drill bit and drill through my rivet right here. Now with that one removed, we're gonna have another rivet on the other side of our roller and we're gonna to need to remove that as well. With the rivets removed, we can go ahead and start sliding the cap away, which is gonna start exposing the spring assembly. And you're gonna to wanna to remove that and we can set this aside. Now with an extra couple set of hands, we're gonna lift up the roller and making sure that that screwdriver doesn't come out of the roller, we're gonna start unrolling the fabric off of the roller itself. And you're gonna to wanna to go all the way until you get to the very bottom. All right, now we can set the roller back down. Now on our fabric, we're gonna have two separate sections. One that's gonna be attached to the camper or RV that's gonna go directly to the top. And then we're also gonna have this small section, which is gonna be like the balance area. So to make sure that we get in the right channels, I'm gonna mark this channel with a straight line, letting me know that that's where I'm gonna put the awning fabric material for the main section. Now, back where the valance is, I'm gonna turn my roller over just a little bit so I can reach it. And I'm gonna put a V so that I know that's where my valance is gonna go. Now, if we come to the end where we took our cap off, we're gonna grab the awning itself and we're just gonna start sliding it out until it's completely out of the cross tube. Now one small tip is if it does get stuck in there and you can't pull both sections out at once, if you take a razor knife and you cut in between the two cords and the channels just straight across all the way down the tube, each section will come out much easier by itself. At this point, we're gonna to wanna to take our replacement fabric out and we're gonna to wanna to lay it with the pattern facing down and lay it out flat so we can find our connection points. Now on one end, we're gonna have two cords one for the valance and one for the main fabric piece that's gonna be attached to the top. Now on the other end, we should have that one piece that's gonna go into the channel. Now, if you remember where we marked our locations, we're gonna have the main section of our fabric and then the valance section. So I'm gonna take the valance section and I'm gonna slide it into the channel. And then I can take the main section and slide it into the channel that it belongs to. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the fabric is going around the tube like this. And then you're gonna to wanna to start working it in and sliding it in place. Now it will help if you have an extra set of hands holding the other side of the tarp so that you can get it and slide it into place. And our pull string here, we're just gonna throw on top of the tarp because most likely it is gonna get wrapped up in the tarp but we can always get it out once we get the tarp fully in place. All right, now we're gonna take our tarp and we're gonna roll it up the opposite way that we took it off. So we're gonna go, making sure that the white part is exposed, we're gonna go underneath and start rolling it up. All right, now we can get ready to put our spring assembly back in place. Now you wanna make sure that you line up that hole and that mark that we made with our lever to make sure it goes back in the same position. And you'll also be able to tell if you have it in the right spot because our river holes are gonna match back up. But as you can see, our mark that we made does line back up. Now we're gonna replace the rivets that we drilled out earlier. Now you can pick up these at any hardware store or any local auto supply store. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my rivet gun start setting the rivets in place. And we're gonna repeat that for the other rivet that we drilled out as well. So now we're gonna take our vice grips and we're gonna attach it to our bracket again. And we're gonna lift slightly on our lever so that we can change the position. And we're gonna rotate it counterclockwise 
the same amount of times that we rotated it back to loosen it up. We can go ahead and remove our vice grips. We're gonna need to pull this bolt out so we can reattach our arm. We take the arm, we're gonna slide it into the rough position, and then we can take our bracket here and we can slide it inside the arm. We're gonna line up the holes and start replacing all of our hardware. Okay, we can go ahead and remove the screwdriver here on the opposite side, and we can see that it's not gonna go anywhere. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna start feeding the fabric into the channel while me and someone else hold the arms up and start pulling it back in. Okay, now with the fabric in place, we can lift up our arms and we can lock them back into place. Now at the top of our track where our fabric meets our camper, I'm gonna be putting a self-tapping screw to replace the one that we took out earlier. And we're gonna repeat that on the other side as well. Now we can go ahead and put the arm bracket back onto the side of our RV. Put our hardware in place, and we can come back and secure it. With this side secure, we're gonna go ahead and repeat that same process on the other side. Now with the awning firmly attached, where our installation is complete, but now, as you can see, the rope to grab our awning is a little bit high and we're not going to be able to reach it. So with an extra set of hands, we're going to come to one of our, each of our arms and slowly pull away. And that will allow us to reach our rope and we can extend our awning all the way out. And that will finish up our look at the Solera 14 foot sand fade replacement awning fabric, part number LCV 000334375 on our 2007 Keystone Passport.